Uh, this is Seymour Rocks reporting from Down Under. This is my third attempt to uh, make this video and upload it. Um, yeah, I think this, when I listened to this, uh, shivers just went down my spine. Um, it was just so close to the mark, even though uh, it's from a Christian uh, uh, channel and I don't identify as a Christian. But boy, they certainly hit the mark as far as I was concerned. So let's play this now. Any one of those could be a, a it's all weird. It's just it's all weird. weird. The world, becoming the, the norm in this chaotic United States. I, I don't. Let's just jump into it and uh, let's start with this New York Times article. Oh, this one bothered me. Uh, this troubled me all weekend. Oh, I read this one. I, I couldn't shake it because it just reminded me of why I'm here doing this work. Mm. 20 years ago, what the, 21 years ago, the Lord showed me a vision of America uh, on fire burning. And I've spent 20 years turned to the ways of the Lord. Yes. And what I've witnessed in these 21 years is just the opposite. America has doubled down. I'd say it's tripled down on its sins. Become way more evil. Far more evil than we were the day before 9-11. I mean, if we went back to our morality standard of 2001, I thought we'd be making improvement. That's right. And I thought we were wicked then. But we're, we're so beyond wicked, I, I, I there are no words for it anymore. So let's talk about what the New York Times reported. So the United States is stepping up digital incursions into Russia's power grid in a warning to President Putin and a demonstration of how the Trump administration is using new authorities to deploy cyber tools more aggressively, current and former government officials said. New York Times said in interviews over the past three months, the officials described the previously unreported deployment of American computer code inside Russia's grid and other targets classified companion to more publicly discussed action directed at Moscow's disinformation and hacking units around the 2018 midterm election. Did you know the Russians hacked the, this is the 2018 elections they hacked. They've probably been hacking us since, you know, since 1864, Rick. Probably. So. Advocates of the more aggressive strategy said it was long overdue. After years of warning from Homeland Security and the FBI, that Russia has inserted malware that could sabotage American power plants, oil and gas pipelines, and oil supplies in any future conflict with the United States. Okay, now this is where it starts to get much more troubling. The Times said, the Trump administration dec declined to describe specific actions it was taking under the new authorities. Notice this, the new authorities which were granted separately by the White House and the Congress last year to the United States Cyber Command, the arm of the Pentagon that runs the military's offensive and defensive operations in the online world. But in a public appearance on Tuesday, John Bolton said the United States was now taking a broader view of potential digital targets as part of an effort to say to Russia or anybody else that's engaged in cyber op operation against us, you will pay a price. So enter John Bolton. Yes. We knew somewhere in the shadows John Bolton was lurking in this story. Edward, what's the most troubling thing that you saw in the New York Times? The New York Times alleged that President Trump wasn't actually aware yes. of the... Uh, potentially uh, war beginning actions, uh, uh, planting malware inside Russia's critical electric grid. Not only that he may not be aware, but the Pentagon may have deliberately not told him. Sure, not told him and tricked him into basically signing away authority to U.S. Cyber Command to be able to take this action and, and much more. Well, 
It actually says in that article, Mr. Trump issued new authorities to Cyber Command last summer in a still classified document known as National Security Presidential Memorandum 13, giving uh, General Nakasone, he's in charge of this, uh, the Cyber Command, far more leeway to conduct offensive online operations without receiving presidential approval. They call those defend forward. Which is a, an offense. Isn't that called attack? Yes. Defend Apparently not We're defending forward. It's, it's not the Department of War anymore, Rick. We're right. Department of Defense. We now defend forward. It's all Orwellian newspeak. We're going to defend forward. And I'm, I actually believe that we've done this. And the reason why is because of President Trump's response to the New York Times. In, the, in calling the New York Times treasonous. Yes. It seems to say to me that they released information that was accurate and that it went against the security protocols of the current command. Well, he sent out two tweets. First one, he, he accused the New York Times of committing treason yes. for publishing the story. Right. Then the next tweet said, not true. Well, how can you be guilty of treason if what you published is not true? That's why I believe it's absolutely true. That actually happened. Yes, and that it, we're undergoing that command right now where we are putting malware on systems right now on the Russian power grid. The New York Times said the action inside the Russian electric grid appears to have been conducted under little noticed new legal authority. Military authorization bill passed by the Congress last summer. The measure proved the routine conduct of clandestine military activity in cyberspace to deter, safeguard, and defend against attacks or malicious cyber activities against the United States. And the National Defense Authorization Act, this last one that they passed, empowers the Secretary of Defense to issue these orders without notifying the commander-in-chief, the president of the United States. So you, this law has stripped away the, the authority of the president. The War Powers Act. Yes, and has, has now given basically war-making powers to the Secretary of Defense. And he does, he's not obligated to tell the president of the United States what the Pentagon is doing. They could start a, a nuclear war. Until after the fact, and by then it's going to be too it's late. Too late. Well, if, if the commander-in-chief, President Trump, isn't in charge of our most uh, clandestine and offensive actions against what we've been told is the most uh, prominent enemy of the United States, then who is the commander-in-chief? Is it John Bolton, the man who's come out no. and said that he's in charge of this? Or no. Who is in charge of our government? <laughs> the shadow government. There's a shadow government. The John Bolton's just a, a puppet of the shadow government. He's, 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 a, you know, he's like a, a, a bulldog. They just send him out in the yard to bark, but he doesn't run the thing. There's a shadow government, and, and it's not just one person. There is an alliance, a network of powerful individuals and entities that collectively run what we're calling the deep state, the shadow government. But here's another example that President Trump is not in charge this article by the New York Times says they quoted un, unnamed Washington officials as saying that the Pentagon is not informing President Trump because he may stop them. Right. <laughs> so you're not going to tell the President of the United States what you're doing that could start a nuclear war because he may stop you? So who's running who? Donald Trump, we've been saying this for two and a half years, Donald Trump is not in charge of the U.S. government. Well, this now explains a little further why uh, we've potentially, through John Bolton, our national security advisor, been invited to a trilateral talk in uh, in in Jerusalem coming up in the in the next uh, in a couple of weeks. And President Trump isn't actually going to be involved in that talk. And though that's in regard to Syria, you have to wonder how many of these actions, whether it be uh, provocative actions against Russia, where uh, we're, we actually are not uh, even considering this to be a major leak. Uh, the National Security Council actually said that there's no national security concerns about the details the New York Times is reporting, which makes it seem like they're happy, they're more than happy, that this story has been put out there because now it's, it's a direct message to Russia. Rick, let's take a trip through the True News time machine back to 2016. I seem to remember candidate Hillary Clinton 
making the statement that any attack on the U.S. power grid by a foreign government would demand a nuclear response. Remember that? Yes. Remember her saying that? Would the reason then by Russia, if there was an attack on their power grid, their infrastructure, would they also be in the same mindset to say, this is an attack on our infrastructure, it demands a nuclear response? Of course they would. Uh, what's, good for, uh, what's good for us isn't good for them, right? It is my viewpoint that the deep state is continuing its efforts to prod Vladimir Putin into striking out at the United States to justify a full nuclear war between America and Russia. These madmen, this madness. these madmen that are in control of the United States of America, they're totally insane. They, they want a war with Russia. They hate Russia. I can't comprehend. I don't, I cannot come up with any, I have one, one possible explanation for their seething hatred for Russia. Because it doesn't make sense. Why the, the, the powers that are over this country, what is, what's behind their hatred of Russia? I mean, Russia is a Christian European nation that should be our ally. Yes, yes. In fact, that's what candidate Trump was promising, remember? Yes. Which is why we went into the whole Russia collusion, Russia collusion story was to prevent him from resetting relations with Russia. But the only explanation I, I can come up with is that the Bolsheviks are furious that the Russian Orthodox Church survived 70 years of Bolshevik communism. Right. So they want revenge. They want revenge. The American people, uh, they gave up Jesus Christ. The Russians didn't. Yeah, they're getting ready to ban abortion. That's something from the uh, Patriot Kirill. It's something he's pushing in their country. I mean, the Russian people survived 70 years of atheistic communism. Remember all, all this praying for Russia, for the Russian Christians. Yes. For seven decades that they would be free. And, and now they're free. free. Now they're free. And now we're enslaved. Right. And we're enslaved by the same powers that enslaved Russia in 1917. And it's that power, the same power that took over Russia in 1917, that is running the United States of America. And I believe that they're furious with the Russians, and the, particularly the, the, the Russian Christianity, that, they, that Christianity survived the most horrific onslaught of hell against the church in 2,000 years, and they survived. And not only did they survive, the church thriving. is thriving now. Yes. They're building churches on military bases. Yes. Now they're chasing uh, chapels off military bases here. Yes. Yeah, so if, if, if viewers, uh, you don't agree with me on that, will you, you give me a better explanation to justify why a power like the United States is seething with this hatred towards Russia? Because it's not logical. If there's no logic in this at all. This is madness. We're, we are, the United States, not saying we, not me, I have nothing to do with this. Unfortunately, I live here and will suffer the consequences of what these madmen are doing. But these madmen are attempting to bring down the Russian power grid. Are they going to do it in the winter? Are children going to freeze to death? How far are they going to take it? What is, what's the end game? What are they after? All right. it, it, this is about power and, and control of the banking system of the world. It, and it's dangerous. It's, it's absolutely dangerous. If I were in the Kremlin, I would be thinking we have to strike them before they take us down. Yes. And the Kremlin is undoubtedly using this example and many others have happened over the past 10 years to further strengthen their alliance with China. For example, you talk about the banking structure. We know from the St. Petersburg International Economic Forum that China and Russia are continuously trying to replace the U.S. dominance over the international banking structure and all other forms of currency. 
And the reason that they're doing that is to get out from under the control of the same people. Right. Who are using the money system to dominate. And so if, if you, in terms of freedom, and you start developing a plan to get out from that domination, well, that's, that only makes the U.S. globalists double down right. on making sure you don't get out from under their headlock. Uh, Dmitry uh, Peskov, who is uh, the press secretary to Vladimir Putin, he said, as far as I know, such information was categorically denied by President Trump if, if we assume that some government departments are doing this without informing the head of state about it, then this information undoubtedly indicates the hypothetical possibility of all signs of cyber war, cyber war actions against the Russian Federation. Yeah. Now, think just about that statement that was just issued there. You're the Russians, and you're looking in at the United States, and you're seeing that there are parts of the military that are not informing the chief executive of potential military plans to take down another world power. Yes. And you've got to be thinking, is anybody in control? Is anyone in charge over there? Who's running the show? They know who's running the show. That's right. They don't. They're, they're not thinking that uh, America is out of control. No, they know it is under control. Mm. But it's Bondage. not under the control of the White House, not the President of the United States. And this is what we've been saying now. And the Chinese are looking at America as a a nuclear armed failed state. Yes, a rogue superpower. Yes, that there is a. There is a struggle inside America for control, and that makes us a very dangerous animal in the world. But I'm sure there would be viewers and listeners out there that would say, Rick, we're not a failed state. Look, the stock market is buzzing. The unemployment's at the lowest. Uh, everybody's buying houses. You know, there's milk and honey flowing everywhere, right? It's all in debt. That's right. It's all by debt. We're a failed state in God's eyes. In God's eyes, we are a failed state. We have been weighed in the balance and found wanting. Yes. We're a failed state. In the New York Times article, it says, two administration officials said they believe Mr. Trump had not been briefed in any details about the steps to place implants Software code that can be used for surveillance or attack inside the Russian grid. Pentagon and intelligence officials describe broad hesitation to go into detail with Mr. Trump about operations against Russia for concern over his reaction and the possibility that he might countermand it or discuss it with foreign officials. Just that statement is just so crazy. Goes on. Because the new law defines the actions in cyberspace as akin to traditional military action on the ground, in the air or at sea, no such briefing would be necessary, they added. So because it's not part of the conventional means basically of warfare, whether it be a submarine, whether it be a tank, whether it be from a jet, it doesn't fall into the president's sphere of uh, a briefing. There is a shadow government in Washington that is vying with Donald Trump for control of the United States of America. One of the things you like to do is flip the script. Mm -hmm. and so let's put it into Russia. Let's say if we were hearing from Russia right now that there were generals that had control of uh, their cyber command that were not accountable to President Vladimir Putin. Would that send shivers down your spine? Absolutely. You'd be, you would be very concerned that Russia was falling apart. Yes. And that uh, a group of rogue generals... And war hawks were taking over, and a coup was underway. Right. It's called a coup. And that's what we've had a slow coup underway for two and a half years. Yes. And the world knows it. The whole world knows it. It's just the American people that don't get it. But it's frightening uh, that, uh, that this is going on. One, uh, one person who commented about it uh, is... Um, uh, Professor uh, Stephen Cohen, New York University, Princeton University, he said, quote, I think this is the most dangerous moment in American-Russian relations, at least since the Cuban Missile Crisis. Did you get that, folks? 
That's what about this. I, I, every time I see this man on TV, I stop and listen to him. I've never interviewed him. This man is very wise. He he's, understands the, the significance of what is going on between uh, the United States and Russia, in particular referring to this so-called Russia, uh, Russia hacking scandal. He said, I think this is the most dangerous moment in American-Russian relations, at, at least since the Cuban Missile Crisis, and arguably it's more dangerous because it's more complex. Therefore, we, and then, meanwhile, we have in Washington these a factless accusations that Trump has somewhat, somehow been compromised by the Kremlin. So at, at this worst moment in American-Russian relations, we have an American president who has been politically crippled by the worst imaginable, unprecedented, let's stop and think, no American president has ever been accused of treason. That's what we're talking about here, or that his associates have committed treason. Imagine, this is the professor talking, imagine John Kennedy during the Cuban Missile Crisis, imagine if Kennedy had been accused of being a secret Soviet Kremlin agent. He would have been crippled. And the only way he could have proved he wasn't an agent was to have launched a war against the Soviet Union. That's what the deep state is trying to do. Yes, They want President Trump's Donald pride. Trump to start a war to prove he's not... A Russian stooge. Right. Why do they want this war? Because their system, I, oh, their system is imploding. The whole financial system that they've set up is all set up on debt, fiat money, and, and it's imploding. It's being held up by, it's a life support. And, and I think, I think that the anger towards the Russians for embracing Jesus Christ, while America has embraced Satan. Yes. We have become a satanic nation. We're not a Christian nation. Please don't say America is a Christian nation. We haven't been a Christian nation for decades. We are now a satanic nation. We murder babies. We have uh, same-sex marriages. We, we, uh, the nation, the population consumes massive amounts of pornography. A everything about the society is, is satanic and against the laws of God. It is a satanic society. And our leaders are mad. They've gone insane. I, mean, I don't... I, I have it, you know... For, Two and a half years since Donald Trump was elected, I haven't been, my soul, my spirit hasn't been vexed and troubled that we're going to be attacked and wiped out as a nation. But in the past, I'd say 30 days, I, I've given up all hope that uh, Donald Trump was going to turn it around. And I, I, I don't see it. Uh, I, I think his hands are tied. I think he's in over his head. Uh, I'm not blaming him. Uh, there is, you got two things going on with Donald Trump. He's, he's sold out to the Israeli Zionists. And on the other hand, he's got a, a deep state shadow government coming after him. Where are we as the American people? Where are we in all this? Right in the middle. We're right in the middle of it. We're right in the middle of it. And he's yet to cry out to God. I've not heard Donald Trump with his own lips, his own voice, cry out to God. I've not heard it. So in the past 30 days, I've started to get this feeling again that I had going up to the 2016 election, judgments at the door. And that's where I'm at now. Uh, the Russians uh, intercepted.